Thank you for expressing interest in participating in the Great Bay Scallop Search. Um, these events are uh, volunteer-based resource monitoring events that take place in Southwest Florida and the Panhandle. My name is Betty Stogler. I'm a Florida Sea Grant agent located in Charlotte County and the host of one of your events. This video is designed to give you an idea of what we'll be doing when you come out to participate in the event, um, as well as kind of a training tutorial um, to let you know what will be expected of you out on the water. So let's get started. So when you come out to the event in the morning, the first thing you're gonna do is stop by the registration table. Everyone will sign in. And then um, each boat and each kayak team will receive a captain's packet that looks like this as well as a bucket of gear, a two meter depth pole, two one meter poles, and if you don't have a dive flag, you can borrow one from us. If you haven't participated in a Great Bay Scallop search before, once you get all your gear, you're gonna to wanna to stop by our education table, and there you can see what live bay scallops look like, um, find out about how to find them in the field. You'll also learn the three different types of seagrasses that um, you'll be search doing your search in. What's in your packet? So in your captain's packet, you have a series of maps. This is gonna help you find your grid or your sampling location. You also have field procedures. So if you forget something that we went over either in the video or during the morning orientation, you can refer to this. You also have the contact information of the person who is coordinating the event. So if all else fails, you can give us a call. You have a data sheet. And then you have some, some handy resources. Um, one of the things we'll be asking for is for you to identify the seagrass species that you are encountering along the transect. So this is a guide to help you figure out which seagrass species um, you're snorkeling within. We also have a base scallop search field key and this helps you determine whether or not you really did find a base scallop and some of the other common bivalves that um, you might mistake in a base scallop for. And on the back side, there's some tips for snorkeling the transect, um, which we'll be going over. So use these um, when you're out in the field to help you with your scallop search. Okay, so once everybody is signed in, we'll start the orientation and everyone will gather around and we'll go over the procedures. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to explain how you find the location that you've been assigned to. Each team is going to be assigned to a grid location that's usually a nautical mile square, although it can change by um, region. And that, that grid location is going to have a grid number associated with it. We provide you with lots of maps to help you find that grid and um, some of them are much larger scale so that you can see where your grid is in relation to the larger landscape. Um, once you find your grid, we're going to ask you to find seagrass within the grid and we've overlaid seagrass on these maps so that that can help you find the seagrass. And then we're going to ask you to find a snorkeling depth that's comfortable to you. And most people like three to four foot as a comfortable snorkeling depth. We do ask that you not snorkel in anything over two meters because um, bay scouts really just don't occur that deep in our local waters. Okay, once you get to your, your preferred snorkeling location, you're going to deploy your transect gear. And your transect gear, a transect is really nothing more than a straight line that you're going to perform a survey on. In this case, it happens to be weighted at each end and it has a float that marks it at the surface. Our transect is gonna be 50 meters, so the weights are at the 50 meter increments and then there's additional line and the floats at the surface. Um, you're going to deploy that transect line in a couple of different ways depending on the situation. So if you're in a boat, you can um, actually deploy one end of the transect line in the water and have that boat captain just go in a straight line and pay out the line until you get to the end and then put the other end in the water and he can drop anchor. If it's too shallow or perhaps you're in a kayak or canoe, you can actually walk or kayak that transect line out. So you're just going to have somebody get in the water and another person's gonna pay out the line while they're walking the 50 meters. And then if you're doing it that way, particularly if you're walking, what we're gonna ask you to do when you get to the end of the transect line, make sure it's taut and then take two large steps up current so that you're out of the way of the area that you just walked in before you do your survey. That way you're in nice clear water. 
So only two people are going to snorkel the transect and any additional snorkelers will be snorkeling around the transect looking for base scallops and also looking at the seagrass conditions. The two people who snorkel the transect, one is going to be on each side of the transect line and they're going to use a one meter pole to um, do their count within. So we're counting one meter each side, that's 100 meters square total. When you do um, snorkel along the transect, you really do have to dive down. You have to rub your fingers through the seagrasses and um, really root around to find the base scallops. They're not going to be visible from the surface. You look for their blue eyes. Um, you can feel for them. You might be able to see them if you scare them. They might scurry um, away from you, so you might notice them that way as well. In order to standardize our data so that we can make comparisons from year to year and region to region, we only count base scallops found within one meter either side of the transect line. Now that's not to say that base scallops found outside of this narrowly defined search area aren't important. They are, but we only record that information as comments on the data sheet. If you do find base scallops within the search region on your, um, along your transect, we're going to ask that not only do you count the base scallops, but that you measure them. And the way you'll measure your base scallops is that you'll use the calipers provided and you'll measure from the base of the hinge to the top of the shell and you'll record that data in millimeters. At the end of each transect, um, you're going to want to record all your information on this data sheet. Important parts of the data sheet, um, most important is the grid number so that I know where you did your survey. Um, there's also information, latitude and longitude, if you have a GPS on board, what those water depths were for your individual transects. And this, this particular data sheet is one, two, three, four, those four different transects. Um, the distance of your transect line, and that's normally going to be 50 meters. Your scallop count for each diver. Your shell heights would go here. The seagrass type, and again, um, you do have resources to help you determine that in your packet. Um, your density, whether it's really lush or sparse or something in between, the macroalgae that might be present, and then any additional comments or um, information that regional coordinators want um, you to collect. Um, and then you do that for each transect that you're doing before you come in. The distance between transects really doesn't matter. But we do ask that if you put two transects close together that you move to a new area before you do your third and fourth. At the end of the day, when you're all done with all of your transects, um, you'll come back to shore, you'll bring us back all your gear, fill out a brief survey, and in exchange for your survey, we'll provide you with lunch and a t-shirt. So this event is really important because it provides us with a kind of a snapshot of adult populations from year to year. And in many locations of the state, this is the only adult survey that takes place because of limited resources at the agency level. And of course, when you put 40 volunteers or 100 volunteers, 40 boats in the water on any given day, and they're all doing the same thing and collecting the same data, that is huge because it would take a lot of resources for agencies to be able to collect that kind of information in such a short period of time. Base scallops, as many of you know, once were um, at healthy populations, but we haven't seen healthy populations in decades, but we'd love to see them come back. So this gives us an idea of what the population looks like this year, and then we can use that to establish trends over time and see how we're doing. And it's also really important to help us identify where we might want to do restoration in the future. So your data, your efforts are really important.